Freedom Fails. We'd like to take you on a visit to a town that doesn't exist. A town we call Springfield, USA. We'd like to show you how things would be in any American town if communism took over. This is the story of an average American family, like the family who lived next door. What would happen to this family under a communist regime? Carl Brady is the name of the father in our family as we tell the story of Springfield Revisited. Five minutes to go for you. What time did you get to Midland? Oh, about six. You glad to be getting back? Yeah. It's been over two years. Wonder if it's changed much. I suppose it has. Any country been occupied by a foreign power is bound to show some change. What are you going to do when you get in? I'm going to look up some old friends. You met them, the Bradys. Oh, I remember. Hey, they're a happy family. Two wonderful kids. I certainly use envy, Carl. Still do, as a matter of fact. They're my idea of a typical American family. How old are the kids? Well, uh, my daughter Mary, she was 10. She used to be 12 or 13 now. Tony, I guess he's in high school. Must be about 16 or 17. Yeah, I guess it's a good life. I don't even know if they still live in Springfield. I'm going to phone Carl as soon as we get in. I'm calling a Mr. Carl Brady. Does he still work there? Yes, he does. I'll connect you. Brady speaking. Carl! Oh, it's good to hear your voice. Who is this? Midwestern University, class of 26. And best man at your wedding. Tom, where are you? <laughs> I'm here in Springfield. Yeah. Oh, that, that, that's fine, Tom. Uh, look, can you uh, can you come to dinner tonight around 6.30? Well, fine, I'll be there. You still live at the same place? Yeah, yeah, I do. I'll see you then. Goodbye. Hey, wait a minute. What's the rush? Look, I, I can't talk to you now. I'll see you at dinner. Goodbye. Martha. Hello, Tom. Come in. Martha, it's good to see you. Oh, thank you. Carl just phoned from the office. He'll be here in a few minutes. Please sit down. Thank you. I wish I'd known earlier that you were coming. I could have fixed something special for you. Oh, that wouldn't fit necessary. Well, let's see. When were you here last? Oh, it's been almost three years. This is the first time I've been back in the States. Everything seems so... so quiet. Yes, there have been changes. Oh, that must be Carl. Good evening, dear. Hello, dear. Oh, good to see you, Tom. Oh, what a pleasure. Thank you so much for asking me over. Tom, um, I'm sorry I was so abrupt with you on the phone, but one never knows who's listening in. What's this Neil Lapel, Carl? The Communist Party button. You a communist? Tom, you've been gone for a long time. You don't know how hard it is just to live. My mother had an expression she used. You've got to howl with the wolves or they'll devour you. And that's what I'm doing. Howling with the wolves. But I don't have to like it. Not at home, at least. Oh, it's not that bad. Things could be worse. Yeah. Where are the children, Martha? Oh, Mary will be here any minute. Uh, Tony won't be home until later. This is Tuesday. Tuesday? Uh, you know, political education. Oh, that. Let's all sit down. Yes. <clears throat> political education. Three times a week. The boy hasn't even got a free evening anymore. Sundays, he has to go out with the brigade, working on farms or building roads. Political education. Well, it's orders. 
Everybody does it, and Carl knows it, but he just won't bring himself to realize that times have changed. Oh, Martha, Martha, please. Well, I'd better go see about my pie. Do you still like apple pie, Tom? Green apples, cinnamon, and fresh cheese? Mmm, <laughs> sounds delicious. I've thought of your pies many times. Good, I'll get you a drink. <laughs> well, Tom, tell me about yourself. Oh, there's not much to tell. You know I was working for the oil company in South America when uh, the communists took over. Yeah. They kept us all there on the job. Took over the supervision, of course. But the more I see things here, the more I realize how much better off we were there. No restriction? Oh, we're still subject to the communist rules and the laws. They closed the plant down there and ordered us all back. Told us to register at our homes and find new jobs. I see you've got a lot to learn about living in an occupied country. Here, here's everything you need for drinks. Hmm. Will you mix them, Carl? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Tom, uh, still scotch and uh, water? Well, that's what I drink when I'm able to get it. Mm-hmm. And this is our last bottle of imported scotch. Well, if you'd only stop finding fault and try to make the best of things, you could have all the scotch you want. Party members have priority, don't they? Oh, now, Martha, I've told you time and again that I joined the party on account of my job, and not so that I, I could beg favors from some pompous stooge. Here you are, Tom. Thank you. Martha, there Thank you, you are. Dear. Well, Tom, let's drink to your return into the old days. Mm. Mm. Ah, very good. Very good. Well, who's this? Good evening, Father. No. Mother. Hello, dear. Mary. Mary Brady, how you've grown. Well, don't you remember me? Yes, of course. Good evening. Oh, come now. How about a smile? You've become a very pretty girl. Thank you. Well, what's, uh, what's new in school? We had more trouble with that reactionary history teacher of ours, Miss Garson. She wanted us to hang a picture of George Washington in the classroom under the Ritter and Stalin pictures. Who's Ritter? He's the local commissar, head of the state action committee. So what about Miss Gosser, Mary? Why, I had to bring it up before the pupils' committee, of course. Oh, of course. Uh, forgive my question, but I'm a little behind on these various organizations. This uh, pupils' committee. Every class has a committee. We elect members of the class to make special studies of political education, sports, newspapers, lectures, economics, and history. That's Miss Garson. Naturally, she was voted down six to one. What do we need a picture of George Washington for? Mary, you shouldn't say things like that. Mary, we wouldn't have had this democracy without George Washington. That's not true, and I can prove it. The chapter in our history connected with Washington is now closed. Today, the United States is marching toward Russia and socialism. Where'd you pick that up? Mr. Hastings. He says that Washington and Lincoln, all of the so-called American heroes, are nothing but bourgeois swans. I've told you time and again you're to stay away from Mr. Hastings. Now, I'm sure that you can find a more fitting associate than the janitor of an apartment building. Mr. Hastings has very high standing with the action committee. He's one of our finest party members. Well, uh, Mary, look, uh, don't you think you're a little too young to understand what George Washington did for this country? Are you in the party? Mary, Tom is our guest. Are you in the party? No, I'm not, but... So, another of Father's reactionary friends. Even now, he's being watched and checked. And so will you be when Mr. Hastings finds out. Mary, leave the room. Leave the room. Carl, Mary, please. I'll be happy to leave. Excuse me. Not outside. Go to your room. I'm going to talk to Mr. Hastings. Mary, you'll do as I say. Go to your... Twelve years old. What are girls of that age supposed to be interested in? Books, games, dolls? I don't know. She doesn't care for any of them. The walls of her room are covered with pictures of Russian marshals. Well, she she must have some other interests. Yes. Our janitor, Hastings. The local party stool pigeon. Well, Tom, you would have seen this happen sooner or later, but I'm sorry it had to be here. Well, what do you mean? Oh, the spying and the rest of it. Your room will be searched. You'll be followed. Possibly even arrested. Unless you're very careful. Well, this sounds like something out of a ten-cent novel. Yes, I told you you have much to learn. Oh, I'd better go see to my dinner. So, Martha, I think I've lost my appetite after listening to my daughter. I wish you wouldn't keep antagonizing the child, Carl. I'm going to flash that nonsense out of her head. Someday she's going to tell her teacher that Don't you... be an idiot. Oh. 
Martha, Martha, I'm sorry. I never used to lose my self-control. Well, you lose it often these days. Honey, it, it, it's cold in here. Can't we have some heat? Heat's rationed, you know, dear. Why don't you come into the kitchen? It's warmer in there. A good idea. Come on, let's go. Yes, sir. Sit there, John. Hmm. Thank you. Well, what's new? What do you do in your spare time? Spare time? <laughs> there is no such animal. First of all, everybody who works for a nationalized industry has to learn Russian and pass an examination in it if he wants to keep his job. So does everybody who works for the city or national government and, and even professional people, too. Well, that seems a little ridiculous. Uh, people laugh and say we must all learn Russian so we'll be able to get along when they send us to the camps in Siberia. Some joke. Twice a week I have to attend a course in political education, just like, like Tony, my son. This is impossible. I no longer have time to read the travel books and novels that I like because, because I have to study the writings of Marx, Engels, Lenin, Stalin, and all the rest. And the children. Tom, that's what I'm really worried about. They learn the communist theories in school, and when they come home, their parents tell them something different. And after a while, the poor kids don't know whether they're coming or going. They get confused and frightened. Everybody's frightened. I was frightened coming home on the streetcar tonight. A man sitting across from me gave me a funny look. Then the questions came to my mind. What questions? You become afraid your doubts and intentions show in your face. I looked at this man and I said to myself, now where does he belong? He's not wearing a party badge, then he's not a communist. But on the other hand, he may be such an important one that he doesn't have to wear a badge. He may be a member of the, con of the Central Committee or the Secret Police. Or maybe he's a reactionary. Does he know that I'm an opportunist? Why does he keep looking at me? Have I done anything that might get me into trouble? Today, yesterday, last week, last year? Couldn't it be because a stranger called me on the telephone? Oh, see, I'm sorry. No, no, no. Don't worry, Tom. I, I'm, I'm just trying to explain the nationwide anxiety neurosis. You go to bed with fear in your bones, and when you get up in the morning, it's still there. It's brother against brother. They take you to the prison, and when you, when you get there, your fellow countrymen, your own people, beat you up. That's what's so hard to take. You walk up to a shop window where two women are talking, and as you approach, they become silent and back away. They're afraid of you. They think you're a secret one. Carl, would you open this jar? Oh, let me have it. How's dinner coming, Martha? It's ready pretty soon. Here you are. Thanks. Oh, did I tell you Jane's coming over for dinner? Did you have to invite her tonight? No one ever invites Jane. You know my darling sister as well as I do. She probably was downtown all day looking at dresses, and then she got home and discovered there was nothing to eat. You've met her, haven't you, Tom? Yes, yes, I remember her. Vivacious, headstrong, handsome Jane. Always being thrown out of a job. She was hopelessly generous. Always giving things away. And she was habitually in debt. Yes, but she was honest. And <laughs> stupidly impulsive. She's divorced, and her daughter is six years old now. Well, I hope you two won't fight all evening long. I don't fight. It's Jane who starts the argument. She's a reactionary, just like you, and can't see the times have changed. Life is no longer merely a nice evening at a nightclub. Well, Jane doesn't go to nightclubs anymore. Well, she used to, all the time. Hi, folks. Oh, I didn't hear. Tom! Well, Tony, you remember me, huh? Sure, sure I do. Well, how is South America? I sure wish I was there. Tony. Oh, for a visit, I mean. Tony, I wish you could live there. At least you'd be safe. Come. I'm sorry, Martha. Do we have time for another drink before dinner? I think so. I hear our new liberators have been keeping you busy, Tony. Yeah, political classes, learning Russian. Not much fun. Well, from what I've heard, I guess I'd have been better off if I'd stayed in South America. Oh, don't let Comrade Mary hear you. I saw her downstairs plotting with Hastings when I came in. Don't talk that way about your sister. Can I have a drink, Dad? Oh, sure. Sure, Tony. Hmm? The milk's in the refrigerator. Oh. <laughs> I guess I'll go to my room and study. See you, dinner. I never thought the day would come when we'd have political arguments in our family. The whole thing makes me sick. Well, that must be Jane. Well, she's on time for a change. <laughs> You are listening to Springfield Revisited. 
a story of the way things could be if communism took over. A picture of what life would be like under a communist regime in an ordinary American town. A town we call Springfield, USA. <laughs> I'll let Jay in. Okay. Uh, Mr. Drinkwater, will you come? All right, Jim. Hello, Martha. Hello, how, how are, are you? you? God bless America, Tommy. How are you? Good to see you. Jane, you look wonderful. Well, thank you. That dress. You're really dressed to kill. <laughs> Jane yes. always manages to look beautiful while every other woman looks like a scrub woman. Uh-huh. Here you are, Jane. Oh, thanks, Carl. Hmm. Oh, that's nice. It's good to see you, Tom. Oh, uh, this is my daughter, Anne. Say hello to Tom, dear. Hello. Hello there. Oh, I'm so tired. I've been all over town trying to find a pair of shoes. Didn't I tell you? Shoes for my daughter. Oh. Say, have you heard the latest joke about the wife of Commissar Callan? Somebody asked her if she was going to the marriage of Figaro. She said, no, I'm too busy, but I'm going to send them a telegram. <laughs> <laughs> Jokes. We've lost our freedom and our self-respect, and what are we doing? Cracking jokes. And go play with Mary. I don't want to play with Mary. She's a communist. You should be ashamed to teach her those things. Anne is six, and she talks like a grown-up. Well, what she says is true, isn't it? Mary and her Russian marshals. Well, Mary's still a young girl. She'll get over this. Get over it. Why do you permit her to associate with this... This rat, Hastings. Oh, he's not so bad. He's only a janitor. He's a full-fledged Communist Party spy, and you know it. He's been directly allied with every purge that's happened in this neighborhood. And I know that your daughter has been a great help to him, too. Jane, how can you say such a how thing? How can you be so blind? How did she happen to know so much about the governor when he was killed? He wasn't killed. He committed suicide. Oh, sure, he committed suicide. Just this morning, I was discussing the very thing with the clerk at the shoe store. Someday you're going to talk to the wrong person, and then you'll be in trouble. You're crazy to talk and act as you do. I don't change my loyalty every year. Well, just the same, it's not prudent. Someday you'll get yourself in trouble. You mean someday I'll get you all into trouble. Well, don't worry, I won't. If anything should happen to me, I'll make it perfectly clear that all the members of my family are loyal worshippers at the altar of Commissar Callan. Besides, your married mother... You can't lose. Oh, for Pete's sake, stop fighting you two. We have a guest tonight. Tom is no guest. He's a friend. Ugh. Let him find out what goes on in a family in occupied America. The same thing is going on in practically every house in this country. People sit at home and stare at each other and are afraid of each other. Children fight their parents. The parents are afraid of them. I wanted to take Anne to see the revival of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. But they told her in school she ought to go only to Russian pictures. Who wants to see those tractors and wheat fields and the wonderful life on a collective farm? They're so happy there, why didn't they stay there? Some Russian pictures are very good. Well, you should know. You've seen them all. Does Hastings give you orders to go, the dirty informer? If everyone you call an informer was one, half the nation would be sitting in prison today. Well, they are, aren't they? Oh, be quiet. You talk like a fascist. And what are you, if I may ask? I'm a... A, a Democrat. Oh, quiet, both of you, please. I'm sick and tired of your squabbling. Let, let, let's have dinner. I'll go and see if it's ready. I'd better go and help Martha. Come on, Anne. Mm, now they'll have a good cry out there and they'll make up. But in five minutes, the same thing will start all over again. Well, you've managed to keep pretty well in the middle, I see. Well, Martha gets cross with me because I don't take sides with her. But I... I can't help respecting Jane, even though she often talks nonsense. She, you know, she could marry a very, very high-ranking communist official. He was an organizer in this very state way back before World War II. Now, Jane could have a nice house, clothes, a car, but she won't even go out to dinner with this man or even a nightclub. And you know what that means to Jane? Have another drink, that's all. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, she makes it very hard for herself. But I certainly wish I had her strength of character. Yeah. Here you are. Thanks, sir. Sure, but you have a wife and two kids. You know, Tom, at night when I'm lying in the dark, I try to remember what my life was like before this happened. My worst problems were seeing Tony through an attack of pneumonia and making Martha stick to her budget. 
I never used to wonder, as I do now, whether I would wake up as usual in the morning or whether they would come and get me before. It's amazing the way they've kept all this such a big secret. I had no idea what conditions were like before I came here today. Uh, Carl, Carl, dinner's ready. We'll eat in the kitchen. All right. Uh, Tony, go get the sister. Dinner's ready. Never mind. Now, you here, Tom. Oh, thank you. Jane, over there with Anne. All right. Carl, will you serve the soup, please? Yes, thank you. Boy, this looks good. Hey, what's that book you've been reading, Tony? It's a grammar book. Russian. It's required in school. Oh, by the way, Dad, mm -hmm. they finally found Harry Wayne. In the same place? Yeah. His mother went there today to give him a change of underwear and a little extra food, but they wouldn't let her see him. I hope you weren't mixed up in this, Tony. Your mother cried all one night last week and she was so upset about it. I've asked you to be careful, Tony. There's nothing to be mixed up in, Mother. Well, just the same. I wish you'd keep away from those boys and stick to your work. Does uh, Tom know what this is all about? Uh, oh, no. Forgive us, Tom. Three weeks ago, two of Tony's classmates suddenly disappeared. Their parents were frantic, of course. Then last week, word came from one of them. He was in a cell at police headquarters. Now, you can imagine what that means. Mm. Now it seems that the other boy, the one we're talking about, is there too. Probably has been questioned somewhere for days about anti-state activities. Anti-state activities. The fellow found some pre-invasion literature on anti-communism and passed it around the classroom. The Latin teacher saw them. That's all there was to it. That teacher pretends to be a reactionary, but we think he's just a stool pigeon for the police. He's a very good teacher. What do you know about him? I know plenty. He reported that song you've been singing. Song? What song? My brother and the rest of his reactionaries in his class have a song. They sing it just to cause trouble. Well, why shouldn't we? Half our class is against the communists. Tony, Tony, you should be more careful. I am careful, Dad, but what's the use? You can't fool them. They know I'm anti-communist. Ask the little Russian flower, my sister. Mommy? Yes, dear? I don't want to sit by Mary. She's a communist. All right, dear. I'll change places with you. Oh, Jane, why do you encourage her like that? I don't blame her. How is the handsome Marshal Callan tonight? Have you told Tom of your love for the commissar? You've been reactionary. Mary, Tony, you will both stop this instant. You'll regret your attitude before very long. I warn you. Mary... Mary Brady, your own brother. You didn't believe me. Oh, she threatened to denounce me before. And if you think I, I won't, Pastor. Mary is a communist. Mary is a... Oh, she's you she's just a reaction. Mary, go to your room. Do you hear me? Go to your room. No, wait, no, wait, I'm going. No. Let us all sit back and enjoy our bitter daily drink. How about some brandy, Tom? Yeah, it sounds good. Martha, where is it? You know where it is, Tom. You still make a delicious pie, Martha. Oh, thank you. I'm afraid the meal was rather plain. Well, it's good, healthy food. What there is of it. Carl's pretty upset. Something should be done about that girl. What can be done? I don't know. But I'm going to have a talk with her and find out just what her status is. This thing is getting out of hand. Oh, please, Jane, don't. Oh, here comes Carl. Please, let's change the subject. Well, now I feel better. Now, here's some brandy. I saw I have a drink. Well, from the looks of that bottle, you must have had yours in the kitchen. Who's that? Oh, dear. I'll see. Don't worry, Carl. Hello. Good evening. Uh, Mrs. Brady. Uh, Mr. Brady, I... Oh, come on. Speak up, Comrade Hastings. Well, I was just wondering... Wondering? Uh, whether you'll take your guest down when he leaves and lock the door after him. Well, of course I'll take him down. I always escort our guests down, and I always lock the door after them, as you well know, Comrade Hastings. It's, um, uh, it's regulations, Comrade. They don't want to have to worry about the doors being left open, especially the strangers around. But Tom is no stranger. He's been here before. Uh, how about a glass of brandy, Comrade Hastings? A good idea. Is um, uh, Tony at home? Why, yes. He's studying in his room. Did you want to see him? Uh, no. Here you are. Thank you. Just wondering if he was in. 
Uh, let's drink to our new freedom. Well, I'm going to bed. Be sure to lock the door, Comrade Brady. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's gone. The dirty informer, be sure and lock the door. Surely even someone as stupid as he is could have thought of a better excuse. Yeah. Tomorrow, tomorrow, the right people will know that you were here, Tom. For the next few weeks, be very careful what you say, where you go. Why do you ask about Tony? They're very little in common. How about another brandy, Tom? Uh, no, no, thanks. I think I'd better be going. Well, it was nice having you. You must come again. Yes, yes, that would be nice. Goodbye, Tom. Maybe we... Goodbye. Uh, I'll see you out, Tom. Thank you, Tom. Good night, Martha, Jane. Many thanks. Well, I suppose all this has been somewhat of a shock to you. Yes. Yes, it has. I don't know how long I'll be able to stand this life. Another year. Eighteen months at the most. My savings will be gone. They'll throw us out of the house. Maybe they'll throw us out before. Maybe we'll all split up. Well, thanks again, Carl. I'll be seeing you. Yeah, yeah. I gotta go up now. Is this the place? Yes, it's on the third floor, number. Oh, Father! Mary, I thought you were in your room. I went for a walk. Well, who are these men? We'll ask the questions for you. I'm Carl Brady. I'm this girl's father. Oh, well, she's a fine girl. We're looking for Tony Brady. Excuse me, please. I must go in. Tony? What do you want with him? He's my son. Oh, I'm. I'm sorry. Will you please lead us to your apartment? But why? What's wrong? You ask too many questions. It's been reported that one Tony Brady is guilty of action against the state. We've been sent to pick him up. He's under arrest. have just heard the story of what happens to an average family under a communist regime. You have just heard what would happen to any American family if communism took over. You think this could not happen? It did happen in the communist-dominated country of Czechoslovakia. It did happen in the family of Mr. Jan Hus, address 722 Kosuth Street near Liberty Square, Prague, Czechoslovakia. been listening to If Freedom Failed, starring Jay Novello as Carl Brady in Springfield Revisited. Music was composed by John Hicks, with musical direction by Michelle Perrier. Springfield Revisited was written for If Freedom Failed by Henry Covell, produced and directed by Robert M. Young. Sergeant Lloyd Iyer speaking. This program has come to you through the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service.